I'm going to make up for what you said. You know, I think it's nice to talk about let's walk the talk, but uh, I will talk the walk. But also talking while we walk and walking while we talk. So that walk and talk become one word. Because this is what this is what it's about. But anyway, so um, I'm going to give you a brief little introduction to, to the walk. Um, a lot of people have been referring to the tour, uh, to the excursion, uh, to the outings. But I will bring it all down to a walk. And why a walk? Because at the beginning, this is what it was. It was simply a walk. Uh, why? Because I mean, I'm somebody that is not South African. I came from Mauritius to study architecture. And when I came to study architecture in South Africa, the first encounter is this notion of fear. Is the business of fear. It becomes more and more and more and more. Um, um, uh, 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 it becomes so big that at the end of my four year of undergrad, I started to feel like I was a prisoner in my own body. So. After my undergrad, I went traveling for three years and then I came back um, and came coming back inspired from traveling, talking about being a tourist somewhere else. Very much inspired and on fire and I decided I'm, I want to propose something else in my thesis about this notion of space, uh, production of space. I wanted to look at this notion of producing a or, or looking at a transient space, an architecture that moves, that breathes, that actually allow um, uh, its uh, uh, envelope to be porous. But obviously the institution didn't want that. What did they say? They said, no, we taught you how to think, but now that you are thinking, we would like to tell you how you practice your thinking. Right. So I went into a depression for two years, completely black, black dark. I couldn't even draw a line. And in that heart of this depression, I'm referring to that as, a, as, a, as an inability to control the self in a context. Out of that inability, I embraced it and actually thought, okay, I'm going to lose, I'm going to actually lose it. And I want to go for a walk and go for a walk um, primarily to be hit on, primarily to be hurt. And, 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 and as a result, I took a big camera with me, almost obsessed with this notion of space. But mainly now I'm starting to find out my obsession and passion lies more about spaces of in-between. Absence that gives reasons to presence, but very often we don't understand that this notion of absence is maybe more important than what presence is. That's because we are taught, we are conditioned by our being, with religion, with gender, with all, with our with our, with our family, with our context, with our society. We don't have a choice to question the way that we are in space anymore. So I just completely let go. I took the camera and I wanted to do a photographic essay about spaces of in-between in the city. I exposed the camera, I didn't close it up, big lens. And I walked, I walked from where I used to stay, which is on the ridge, um, a suburb, and I walked right through the city. I didn't quite know what route I was talking, taking, I just went. And I walked past, walked past, and eventually, coming to the city where everybody said, don't go there, those people are dangerous. So I just walked, and as I walked, I find people were not trying to stab me and take my camera, but more and more people say, shoot me, shoot me. That's all I heard, shoot me. So I took picture and then afterwards, as you do, you print or you don't and you feel guilty. You bring back and you start doing So as I walk, and by the end of the walk that I found myself by the, by the harbor, um, um, I had shifted my, my head space. Instead of being depressed, I was slightly manic, like, like here. I was completely manic. I went home to my wife. I said, you won't believe what's going on. I found this and this. I was talking with this. And she got frightened. She said, shit, what's going on here? So as a result, I thought maybe that headspace, that dark headspace, was what made me in an illusion of walking and experiencing those things. So I came back again. And I came back this time with a Norwegian poet that was here in town and that wanted also to be messed up. So he says, come, let's go. Let's get messed up. I want to ride. And we walk again. And now the worst thing that happened, well, worst or best, was that as I walked, not only people recognized me, but people remembered my name. My neighbor never looked at me in the eye. My neighbor doesn't know what sound my voice makes. But these, these people here, they remembered. Doom, not an easy name to remember. Doom, come. I parked on the veranda, we sat. Earliest I ever drank beer at 10 o'clock in the morning. But we drank, we chat, I was introduced to the lighties, 
to the grandparents and, and, and there I started to walk again because it nourished me. So I walk and then as I walk the story started to spread. We're now talking about it became a story. That's what it became, a story. And as I started to walk, people wanted to come, they start to come and we start to walk. We start to walk. But it didn't stay there. I, as I walk, I noticed that, and I, so I started to ask myself, you know, as this architect, why did I choose this route? You know, I wanted to find out what brought me there. So I find out that I was not the only person that was walking. And as, as I start to look up from down and look around, trying to really understand the context that I'm moving, people walking there. Thousands of people that walk from the sort of uh, uh, perceived periphery. I say perceived because this notion of periphery and center is constantly shifting, as we will see as we go. So from the township in Kumba and Ketomana, there is, and we, eventually we had project, but there is about six to seven thousand people that walk daily from the township. They walk all the way right here next to the freeway. Quite interesting, actually. And they walk right through here in the parks there, and they go straight to the market. To the market, major uh, 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 interchange of pedestrian, taxi, and all the stuff. And from there, they went to various areas. So then I started to talk to them. And out of that, there has been an amazing discovery of um, a, a platform, a walk, that has become a way to unpack the social, political, uh, poetical, philosophical, personal. Um, a reality of a post-apartheid South Africa in how people are practicing their own freedom. So this is just a short story and what we're doing now is we're touching from here which is kind of halfway and going to, to the ICC. Now, diving into the context, we are here now. We've been walking from the township coming. And, um, and also, the, before we go, I just want to tell you that the walk is not just a walk that you're doing with your feet now. You're walking through me, through my eyes, through the way that I understand my world in this reality. You will, you will be bombarded with me talking complete, constantly as if I was breathing. But also at the same time, I will suggest to you that this walk is a sensory walk. As we walk through, pay attention with your, with your heart. So you start looking with your heart so that we can see and not trying to look with the eye, which is the tool for looking. Because the difference between the two of them, again, it's two polarities looking same, <coughs> and in between there's a process of reflecting of what we have we have looked at to negotiate ourselves through space. But anyway, I will go through tangent. I will go through lots of tangent. I will lose myself. Uh, don't worry about it. Nothing is really as serious as I might as, as it might seem to be, and I might just remember what I was saying here down the road, and that's also all right. So, because there's more order in chaos than we will ever, ever imagine. So, now coming to this place here. So, it's a sensory walk, right? So, pay attention now. You've got the nodes, eh? Good very much. So, coming to this place now, this is the entrance to the city, the fresh home to the city as we know it. And we've left the suburb and the light industrial behind us. And at this point, I was talking about in betweenness earlier. And this is a word that you'll see that will come up and again. Why in betweenness? Because Throughout our experimentation of being in space and observing how space conducts itself with us around it, we have found that, you know, in the most um, uh, in the most uh, uh, destructive uh, uh, material that man has brought into this uh, into this uh, 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 world, asphalt, concrete. What you find often is that in that very asphalt. I'm just demonstrating the in-between and why that is going to be the linking element for the walk. In that asphalt, very often, as soon as there is a break in it, look on the other side there, the concrete paving. As soon as there is a break in it, life starts to prevail. So where human control fail, creativity, life, nature start to redeem the sin of our being on this world. I'm being not negative but critical. I think we need to. I need to make that uh, that statement because in being critical about ourselves, we can develop a better understanding of how we practice what we do for a difference, not to make a point. So you'll see there it starts to grow, but nature is so consistent and so tight that in all of the in between, from this micro scale, and as we go, I will point out from a macro scale, looking at Durban from an aerial uh, perspective. This little part of land as we walk through is the threshold that defines this space and that space. 
that threshold is a little triangle for Warwick Triangle. This little triangle, there is only 80,000 inhabitants. In this new triangle, as we penetrate, you'll find that there is a lot of empty site that is fenced, barbed wired, and locked. And that has been the case since about a And then through walking again, I started to investigate why these sites are like that. So I found out that all of these sites was a site that Stephen Biko used to conduct his very first meeting. And this is where, in this little triangle, this is where BC took birth. But yet, in this notion of what should be remembered for the birth of liberation of this country is becoming some kind of amnesia, urban amnesia, pockets of darkness in, in, in the brain of our, I would say, constitution. Everybody brag about the constitution. But these are the invisible elements that exist that we should really be in touch with. Anyway, you see, I'll go on tangent. Anyway. So as we go in, you'll find that there's a lot of sight. Now, interesting enough to, to take that big scale back to the grass and nature, liberation, art, this notion of this desire to create, birthing, all of those things are one that is not separated from nature as we see it in its manifestation. To be free, the notion of conducting these things became very important. And as a result, the system recognized that it was dangerous. So they raised all the houses to the ground. You can see all the trees in the periphery and they lock it up and still like that. So this little triangle has Warwick Junction, which is in a bigger scale, a crack in the asphalt. When we look at the bigger scale, is something that is quite magical as a place. It used to be the periphery. The periphery in the sense that it used to be the suburb area of an inner city once in a long time. And we will see that with all the residential scale houses. But let's walk, otherwise we'll just talk all the way here. And then I'll, I'll touch on what I want to do.